The Honourable Member for Trinity Bay de Verde. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't have a petition. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it is indeed an honour to rise in this House today as the member for the District of Trinity Bay de Verde. As a person who is involved in politics for more than two decades, it is most humbling to sit in this legislature. Mr. Speaker, my first thank you goes to my family, my wife Nadine and my two sons, Benjamin and Alexander. Their support to me has been unwavering. Also, to my extended family and friends who played a major role in helping me get to where I am today. Many thank yous also to my hardworking campaign team and my loyal supporters for believing in me. Without them, my successful outcome would not have been possible. To the people of Trinity Bay de Verde, thank you for your strong vote of confidence in me, and I look forward to representing you in this honourable house. Mr. Speaker, I grew up in the community of Hearts Delight Islington on the south side of Trinity Bay. I have been privileged to spend my entire life there with my family who operates a small business for over 30 years. Both my parents, Steve and Marilyn Crocker, are also lifelong residents of the district where myself and my, my brother Brian were raised. Mr. Speaker, while I am new to the House of Assembly, as I alluded to earlier, I am no stranger to politics. I first became interested in current affairs and government and democracy at a young age. Most here will remember the stand by f that former Premier Wells took on the Meech Lake Accord. It was at this time, while still in high school, I chose to become involved in the Liberal Party. I became actively involved in many boards and committees in the years that followed. I served as a member of the Hearts Delight Islington Volunteer Fire Department for more than 10 years. I have also served as community representative on school councils for my former high school, Holy Trinity Regional High, Epiphany Elementary, and most recently, Crescent Collegiate. I also served as a board member on the Trinity Conception Business Development Corporation. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Trinity Bay de Verde is a collection of more than 30 communities, from Hope Hall on the Trinity Shore to Salmon Cove on the Conception Bay north side of the peninsula. The district has a population of 8,600 residents. I would be too remiss if I didn't mention the district is expect expecting unprecedented growth in the next 120 days. <laughs> Trinity Bay de Verde is home to the historical, historical Hearts Content Provincial Historic Site, where in July 1866, the first permanent transatlantic cable connecting Europe to North America was hauled ashore. 2016, next year, will mark 150 years since that historic day. Interestingly enough, one of the major issues in the district today is communications or lack thereof. The inability for residents of Trinity Bay de Verde, 150 years later, to not be able to use cell phones is unacceptable. Mr. Speaker, we have key industries and employers in the district of Trinity Bay de Verde, but none more important than the fishery. It is the reason our settlers came to those shores and is the reason, and the reason we are there today. The fishing industry is the backbone of the Bay de Verde Peninsula. The peninsula, <clears throat> the peninsula has the province's largest inshore shellfish landings in ports such as Old Perlican and Bay de Verde. There are also more than 1,000 people implied in the remaining fish processing facilities in the district. We must remain vigilant to ensure continued success of this industry, not only for the people of Trinity Bay de Verde, but for the entire province as a whole. One missing piece in ensuring the preservation and growth of our fishery is joint management, or lack thereof. The federal government, with the federal government, we have long talked about joint management with the government of Canada. The time has come to bring this to fruition. Mr. Speaker, outside the fishery, there is an ever-expanding tourism industry on the beautiful Bay of Verde Peninsula, one which includes the Hearts Content Cable Station, the Backloo Island Bird Sanctuary, Cabot Rock in Greats Cove, Northern Bay Sands, Salmon Cove Sands, and our only golf course, Pitcher's Pond Golf Course, which is a picturesque nine-hole located in Whiteway. 
Mr. Speaker, throughout my entire life, Trinity Bay de Verde has been and always will be home. We have many challenges, but we also have many opportunities. Opportunities that we must continue to invest in, like our fishery, tourism, and small business. Mr. Speaker, I was raised in a family where my parents and grandparents were small business owners. I, too, would later continue in the entrepreneurial field. I firmly believe that as we look forward, we must ensure we diversify our economy. One of the key elements of diversifying our economy is through small and medium-sized business. One, <clears throat> one, of the business. One of the biggest hurdles faced by small and medium-sized business in our province today is red tape. Ironically, this happens to be Red Tape Reduction Week. Repeatedly, we have heard small business owners asking for support in this area. I urge the government to work with small and medium-sized business owners and groups like our Board of Trades, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, among others, to ensure that the long overdue improvements are implemented. Mr. Speaker, like all honourable members who enter this House of Assembly, we do so at the will of the people. And our time here comes in many different durations. I firmly believe that all members of this honourable House are here for one primary reason, to serve our towns, our districts, and ultimately the people of our province, Newfoundland and Labrador. During my tenure as member for the District of Trinity Bay de Verde, I commit to representing the people I serve to the best of my ability. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, as a member who has, a has had a lot, sorry, as a member who has had a lifelong love for democracy and good government, it is with great pride and, hu and a humble spirit that I take my place in the Newfoundland and Labrador Legislature along with my 47 colleagues. It is a particular honor to serve my district as a member of the official opposition under the leadership of the member for Humber Valley, who I had the privilege to work with to work with prior to me taking my seat here in the House of Assembly. Having had the opportunity to work closely with our leader, I am confident that under his leadership, great things are in store for this province. <clears throat> I now look, for look forward to working with him again in a new capacity as a member of his caucus, the official opposition, a caucus made up of a group of extraordinary individuals with diverse backgrounds from all corners of our province, from the northern tip of Labrador to our province's capital city. All of us have come together as a united team to offer a strong alternative to the people of our province. I look forward to participating in lively debate and discussions on important matters affecting the people of our province and working with the members of this honourable house to advance the agenda for the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.